I'm back with another photo HDR tutorial. Uh, I just arrived at the location about 20 minutes ago. I managed to cut myself uh, when I first got here because there are a lot of uh, slippery rocks right here. Uh, let me show you where I'm at right now. So you can see uh, where I'm right now. It's exactly the same area where I was last time when I made the underwater uh, stock photos video. Uh, I told you that I would come back, so here am I. And well, uh, when I got here, I just took my shoes off and I cut myself uh, in one of these rocks here. Well, I put a photo there, it's a bit nasty. <laughs> uh, so, well, uh, here's the camera that I, I'm using the new 70, the Nikon D7100. Uh, I just got it a couple of days ago. And this is actually the first uh, pictures that I'm taking with it, uh, and I have it here on a tripod. I'm shooting with a wireless PhotoX remote, so you can see the remote right here. That's the remote there mounted on the camera. And uh, I'm using the bracketing mode. Uh, let me show the settings that I have on the camera right now. Shooting on aperture priority at f10 ISO 200, and I have the camera set on continuous high so that I take one picture and the camera takes the three bracketing, the three brackets uh, automatically. I am shooting at a two f stops of difference for each bracket, and well, I'm hoping to get some nice uh, landscape images. You can see the water here. I'm using also a FOIA polarizing filter, and that's just to reduce all the uh, all the reflections on the water, I'll show you that on the video, I'll record the video so, just so you can see what the polarizing uh, filter does. And well, I hope, so, I hope to get some nice photos so I can make a nice HDR. Uh, tutorial. Um, you can download the, the raw files from my website. You'll find the uh, link on the video description, also an annotation on the video itself. Some of you might not be able to open the raw files that uh, you will download from my website, and that's because uh, well, it's, it's a newer raw format, I, I guess, and uh, some versions of Camera Raw cannot open it. So uh, the, the, I think there's a software that actually can convert the NAF files to, into DNG files so you can open them in Lightroom or Photoshop and that way you will be able to, to edit them. I'll give you the raw files as they come out from the camera and you can follow the tutorial uh, as you can see on the video. And well, uh, I'll keep shooting here and see what kind of images I can get here. Maybe I'll take some long exposures. I don't know. Um, I'll keep shooting here and see what it's about that. So, uh, well, I'll stick here for a while and then go back to Photoshop and see what we get. So, see you later. so here we are in Lightroom 5 and these are all the shots that I took uh, you can see the list right here uh, pretty much all of them are bracketed uh, shots for HDR because that was my that was the purpose of my visit here to this beach and these photos were taken on the beach of Almadrava you can see right there uh, this is a nuclear power plant, actually, and um, it was a nice location and, well, I knew I could get some nice images here. And for this tutorial we will use, uh, well, I already selected the image that I want to use for this tutorial, even though all of them are pretty nice. This is actually uh, a nice image as well, you can see the overexposed, the evenly exposed, and then the underexposed, I used the ND filter, which uh, you can see the vignetting here, so I... We'll discard this shot and this is the long exposure uh, shot that I took I just took a couple of them and I actually edited this one just to see how it uh, came out this is the the original image uh, let me hide this okay um, so you can see how uh, the image looks like and I converted this into black and white so um, I will go to the folder and select the images that I, that we will use for this uh, HDR tutorial and I will use uh, Photomatix 
five, but uh, you can use other software if you want to. Uh, let me, let's disable this. And uh, well, let me go to the folder and start editing the HDR photo. Okay, so uh, here we have the three images that we will use for this um, HDR uh, tutorial, and these are the three shots that I that I took. This is the overexposed, the underexposed, and the evenly exposed photo. And what I will do is open Photomatix 5, and all you need to do is well, you can choose low bracketed photos since I already have them here. I'll drag them right into Photomatix. I'll choose Merge for HDR Tone Mapping and Fusion. Click OK, click OK, and you will get this new window. If you have Photomatix 4, I think this is a bit different. Um, but well, I will not align source images because I took this on a tripod, even though you can choose this and uh, select taken on tripod. Uh, well, let's actually leave that. Maximum shift will leave 2% because I know, I know uh, there was up pretty much no movement there. I shot with the wireless uh, control, so maybe just a tiny movement from the camera, <laughs> but I don't know. Uh, I would normally uncheck this. Uh, crop line images, will leave that on. We will definitely want to choose show options to remove ghosts. Um, I also want to reduce the noise. Um, usually I choose all source images or normal and underexposed because those are the images that usually have more noise on them even though i think i shot at iso 200 so we shouldn't get too much noise but when you're when you merge this to hdr you will always get noise so select this um i also i will also check reduce chromatic aberrations because i know this lens usually gives some chromatic aberrations but anyways we will check that at least leave everything here as it is let's choose adobe rgb and click align and show deghosting options and well let's wait for Photomatix to do its job okay now uh, we are on the deghosting options window and the way I do it uh, you can use automatic deghosting and choose which uh, option you want to set as the unghosted image and usually you should choose or either the evenly exposed or the underexposed and then you increase the deghosting setting here and you can see it removes the ghosting but uh, what I like to do is use the selective deghosting and that way I can select the areas that I know have some ghosting and mainly it's the water uh, the waves here and uh, the rocks uh, didn't move there from there so what I will do is select the water from here like that Let go and now right click and choose mark selection, selection as ghosted area. So this is my ghosted area and now what I will do, uh, in previous versions of uh, this program I think you had like three thumbnails here but um, in Photomatix 5 you have to right click and choose set another photo for selection. And by default it selects the plus one uh, EV um, as the base image but I like to choose this one because I know that the evenly exposed or the underexposed since they are uh, taken at a higher shutter speed the water is um, well more it's clearer uh, and choose preview deghosting and you can see the result if you want to have like that that smooth uh, effect you have to choose let's return to the selection you have to choose the um, plus one and when you choose preview go um, preview you will see that you have a more of a motion there but uh, you can see especially right here if you if you click that but I like to have if you choose the underexposed you will see you have even less movement but the image is kind of dark so I will choose 0 EV and click OK now Photomatix will merge the three images into well we'll merge them to HDR and we will start working from here to make our base image and then we'll go to Photoshop and finish the image there and then you can even import that in Lightroom but uh, well so this is the result that Photomatix uh, gives us uh, usually what I do when I get here is start taking well looking at the image uh, I can see right here some really awful uh, well problems here with the uh, Chromatic aberrations, uh, it did not remove that really well. I will see how we can fix that. Um, 
Then on the highlights you can see we have a lot of noise even though we reduced the noise but uh, we will reduce the noise further in Photoshop. Uh, here on the details uh, we have some color noise especially here um, and some uh, chromatic aberrations there and well all in all this is well the the default result that we get. Uh, if we click default we get less of a of a of an effect so we will start working from here i will not explain in detail what each of this uh, slider does uh, but well i will use the tone mapping and using the detail uh, details enhancer start with the default and usually what i do is crank up the strength to the maximum and then work uh, my way down to all of these options here uh, color saturation usually i don't go past 60 or 65 because i don't want to have that oversaturated look on the image I don't like that I'm more I'm looking more for a for natural um, looking image and the saturation you can always pump that up in Photoshop so I'll leave it to about 65 time compression is just like the luminosity so you can add more light or reduce the light on the image using the tone, tone compression uh, I will leave it here because I will work with the detail contrast. Uh, if you decrease the detail contrast, you can see, well, you get less of a contrast on the details. Uh, if you take a look here at this uh, preview, if you increase that, it looks like the image gets darker, but it's, well, just because of the contrast. So what you can do is play with these two sliders and also with the lightning after that, depending on if you want more contrast or more light and a softer look. So. Uh, with the lighting options, I will not check lighting effects, the lighting effects mode. Um, with this slider, what you do is, if you set it to negative, you will get a more unrealistic effect, and usually you will get more light on the foreground than on the background. And if you set it to positive, you will get more of a closer to the original look of the evenly exposed image. So you can see we get more of a natural effect. So I usually leave it about three, four, five, depending on what you're looking for. If you want to work with the lighting effects, um, what you do is select natural, natural plus, and the more you go towards the medium, well, towards the natural, you can see, as I said, you get more of a natural looking uh, lighting because, well, the source light is here and the closer you, got to, uh, you get to the foreground, the less light we have because it's cloudy out here. So. Uh, if you took, if you select surreal or surreal plus, you get this sort of a nasty looking effect that I really don't like. So I will uncheck this and leave the slider maybe around one or two, and have an, an even light on the foreground and on the background. With the smoothing highlights, you will see that, especially here, if we increase this, you can see we get. Um, a smoother transition from the highlights to the darkest areas to the darker areas uh, with the white point what you do is well set the white point you, when you work with this slider uh, what I usually do is select an area where I see I have highlights like for example here and see this part here uh, or this one here when you increase this you don't you want to make sure that you're not burning out the, the highlights there so Select an area where you have highlights and move the slider until you see you start to lose detail there on those highlights. About here. You cannot judge uh, that really well right here. You can see here it looks like we burned the highlights, but if you click on it, you will see that we actually have detail there. So um, use the this loop information here that you get when you click. Um, the black point is the same, you get the Im you will make the image darker, especially on the shadow, so we will leave the black point to zero. And with the gamma what you do is, well, play with the lightness on the image. You don't want to have something like this, but you don't want to have something like this either. So uh, look for a, for a middle point there. I'll use a positive a value, 0 0.78, just to have a bit more light there on the shadows and overall on the image. Always check the highlights and the shadows to see if you lose details there. You can also view the histogram if you want. Uh, I don't think it has a clipping warning here, I don't know. And well, uh, pretty much done here. Um, let's see what we do with the temperature. Uh, it was getting uh, dark actually. Uh, a lot, fa a lot quicker than I expected, so uh, a more realistic 
uh, temperature would be a cold one. I would have this um, stormy clouds here. Uh, so, well, uh, the, the highlight saturation, I don't want to pump it up too much because uh, you will start to get some bad color casts and I don't like that. Uh, I don't want to desaturate them either, just the positive value, just a, a little bit of saturation there on the highlights. And on the shadows, uh, you don't want to desaturate that because you will start to see really ugly effects there. So uh, I'll probably leave it just like the shadow highlights, about one or something like that. And shadow smoothness is to smoothen out a bit the darker parts of the air, of the image. So about seven, I think, will work for this. If you take a look at the before and after, uh, this is I think this is the evenly exposed image. And this is the HDR that we got. So I think we're pretty much done here. I don't want to um, make it too extreme. Uh, so let's see if we can. Okay, just a, a little bit more of contrast and of tone, comp tone compression to get a bit of a higher contrast image. Again, check the highlights, check the shadows and we'll have a lot of noise here. We will fix that in Photoshop. So we're done with the, with Photomatics. It's pretty quick once you know what you do. And well, it depends also on what you like. So let's go to Apply. And we'll wait for Photomatics to apply the settings. And this is the final image. We will save this as a TIFF file, as a 16-bit TIFF file. These were 14-bit uh, RAW files. So we get more of a color depth there. So I will save this to the HDR tutorial folder. And let's name this Almadrava HDR. And save it as a TIFF, as a 16-bit TIFF. Okay, we saved it. I'll close this now. And here is the HDR file. Now I'll open this in Photoshop CS6 and uh, the first thing we need to do is take care of the chromatic aberrations that we have here really nasty. And what I will try to do is maybe use the clone stamp tool. Uh, the reduced chromatic aberrations um, doesn't really work that good in Photoshop. So I'll try to minimize the effect using this uh, low opacity clone stamp tool okay that's a little better we have a lot of chromatic aberrations here on the rocks as well uh, oops see that and I tried to fix it with uh, with Photoshop but it doesn't really work so what I'll do is just Get rid of some details here. This is ghosting. I don't know. It didn't re really remove it really well. I should have selected the entire image as a ghosted area. Anyways, um, let's do this. We'll make the image a whole lot smaller. So uh, this issue, we will we will not be able to see this uh, chromatic aberrations. Uh, something really weird happened here. I'll try to open the other image, uh, this one, and see if I can use parts of it on to overlay, well, stack the images and maybe get a better result. So what I will do is increase the saturation, uh, make the image a bit, well, leave it like that, and maybe some clarity bit more lights on the shadows and let's I'll press the shift key just to open object and that way um, that way I will open as a smart object so let's well actually I'll have to move this to the other I'll have to move this to the other documents so I'll press and using the move tool click and drag this over top Okay. Uh, 
I'll have to align these images because they will not match. Um, they will not match because uh, in Photomatics we chose to crop that. So we cropped the images when we aligned them. So let's go to this area. It's a lot easier to align. One pixel lower and we're good to go. Okay, and now what I will do is maybe try, well, increase this, um, increase the opacity, create a layer mask, an inverted layer mask, so everything is black and we'll reveal areas from here to try and hide this chromatic aberrations that we have here. Like that. Probably use a bigger brush. Okay, some parts from there as well. And this rock here, which was really kind of ugly. And I think we're good to go. I think it's better than this. Now we have to blend this here. So what we'll try to do is use a levels adjustment clipped to the layer one and maybe darken a bit, especially the highlights there. I'm going to the channels and for the highlights, let's see, we added a little blue there, just a, a bit of blue, some yellow and maybe use a bigger brush on the masking, on the masked area. Okay. And I think we're ready. There's a, a quick fix there. I hope it's not too noticeable. We'll merge everything and we have the image here. Let's close that other photo. Don't save. And well, uh, we'll make the image a lot smaller. And this is a 6,000 pixels the image. We'll reduce it probably to 2,000 and this will be a lot smaller and we will not be able to visit to see that. Okay, so what I want to do now is reduce the noise on the image a bit. So I'll create a new layer. I du well, I'll duplicate the layer and let's see. You can use uh, plugins. I have the image nomic um, noise wear filter, which you can use to reduce the noise. You can see the job that it that it does when I click and let go. I don't know if you can if you're able to see it, um, but you can also use uh, Photoshop's reduce noise uh, filter. So go to filter noise and uh, Reduce noise. You get a pretty decent result, I would say. Um, let's increase the strength to about nine. This will reduce a whole lot of noise. Color noise, you want to increase that a lot, especially if you increase the saturation in photomatics, because that will add a lot of color noise and you want to reduce that. Sharpen details, we'll leave it to about 19. We will use another filter to to increase the contrast. Don't worry about that. So I'll click OK right now. The image nomic does a better job, but uh, if you don't have the plugin, it doesn't really matter. Just make sure you shoot at low ISOs and uh, remove the noise when you merge the images in Photomatics. You can also choose the re reduce noise on all uh, brackets on all th three photos. Okay, so this is the result before and after. It removed some of the noise, especially on the sky, I think. Yep, yeah, see right here on the clouds. I don't know if you can see it on the video, but it definitely reduced the noise. And what I will do now on the same layer is um, use another, another plugin that I have from, from Topaz Labs. I have many of them, but uh, I only have the license for the details too, because it's the only one that I use. If you have, you can also use the denoise. Um, if you want to reduce noise, I don't know how it works because I never tried it. Uh, I only use the Topaz detail because I like how, how it works. And from here, we will use a preset and then we will edit it because that preset adds a lot of noise back on the image. You can try. You can also try adding this filter first and then reduce the noise. But, anyways, um, I will use the micro contrast enhancement, and uh, what this does is increases the contrast on the image. Let's go to 100%. But what I do, uh, you can see, it adds a lot of noise there. So what I will do is 
decrease the small detail and increase the mid tones, uh, the mid, the, the mid, ah, the medium details. <laughs> sorry, uh, just add a bit more of contrast on it. Oh, that's too much. Okay, so um, this noise when we make the image smaller, uh, this noise will will um, sharpen the image. So it, it's not really that bad to have some noise. Okay, so this is the result that we got. Let me click OK and I'll show you the result in Photoshop because it's not really visible here. So let's zoom to about 50%. Okay, and the original and before and after. Okay, so we increase the details a bit. The next thing that I do is work with the color and I, I like to use a selective color, but uh, well, you can you can have your own workflow and with the reds and yellows I usually work for the clouds and if I have a sunset or something like that and also here on the foreground um, I add more red on the yellows I add maybe a bit of green I explained in another tutorial how this um, adjustment layer works so uh, I will not do that now I'll add more yellow to the yellows maybe I added too much green and let's see if we make them just a little darker and then go to the reds and see what we can do with the reds just a bit of cyan a bit of red some blue and let's see if I don't want to make them darker you can see we have too much red too much magenta there so probably pull back on the magenta and add a bit more of yellow but now the yellows are too green so I will add the magenta to make them oh well add more cyan no more magenta and a bit more of blue before and after so we kind of added a bit of a red tone to that okay now let's go to the cyans and the blues which will mostly affect the sky so maybe a bit of sand to make it a little more greenish a bit of magenta and more blue by reducing yellow and let's see what we do with the tones i'll make them just a little darker you can see by using this uh, adjustment we also add a bit of saturation on the image we can saturate the colors separately you can also do this in lightroom uh, if you don't want to mess with the color here you just want to reduce noise and Add certain effects you can do that and then once you're in Lightroom you can you have this uh, let me show you that on the develop module you have this HSL uh, which allows you to change the saturation uh, of certain colors in particular see that or the luminance to make them darker or brighter and you probably a bit better than in Photoshop but I will work here then go to the blues and do the same add a bit of red just a touch bit of green not too much and I don't want to add yellow I want to add blue but in that case I'll add just a little more green and slightly darker to increase a bit the contrast and you can see also it also affects the water here okay so let me show the before and after that I what I did with this adjustment before and after just increased a bit the saturation on the whole image and increase the contrast. I would not mess with the tones, with the whites, neutrals and blacks. Uh, with the neutrals I would probably see this part here. A, the grays are a little red so I would probably add a bit of cyan on that. Not too much because as soon as you do something here you can see kinda makes the whole image look crazy so I don't want to touch that too much. And let's continue. The next thing I would probably add is a gradient map and I will choose black and white and select the blend mode from here like soft light to increase the contrast a bit and reduce the opacity see that to 22 percent we increase the contrast just a little bit and if you want to add a create a sort of a split tone effect you can use curves and go into the channel I'll select the blues and rise this just a little to add more blue on the shadows and if you lower the top part you'll add more yellow on the highlights so you can do something like this or you can do a typical S curve like this see that 
and let's try the same on the reds but this one let's try it differently on the opposite way I don't really like it so I'll probably leave it how it was and now decrease the opacity to about 50% just to give it a different touch to the image you can also add vignetting or you can use other things but I don't want to overcharge the image I like how it looks right now uh, the color lookup also can give you nice results um, but as, as I said I want to stay as realistic as possible so you can try different tones uh, late sunset and then well play with the opacities and get all sorts of tones on your image red blue yellow let's see how this looks yeah this one look look pretty nice I'll actually leave this here because I like how it looks well, so this is the image edited in Photoshop. Let me show the original. We started from this and we ended up with this. So I didn't do too much of a change. I didn't want it to. So I, I like more natural results here. So what I will do is now make the image smaller. About, as I said, 2000 pixels. And take a look at the image. We have detail those uh, chromatic aberrations and stuff there are no longer visible neither the ones that we had here or on the rocks that's why it's nice to work with high resolution images I didn't clean the image at all I didn't use the clone stamp to remove anything I didn't have any uh, dust spots on the camera it's new so I shouldn't <laughs> and right now I will save it as a TIFF file and I will go to Lightroom just to show you a few things that you can do there if you want to, but uh, it's not necessary. Amadrava PS, just to know that this is edited in Photoshop. Click OK. And I think it's already saved. Let's go here. And yep, this is the image. Let's open it with Adobe Lightroom if I can find it. Well, actually, I'll drag it here. Library, let's see if I can do that. Yep, let's import that and go to the develop module. And this is the image that we got. As I said, uh, you can use gradients here. Uh, for example, I can do something like this, a bit smaller. And now I can edit the contrast and everything that we have here just on the top part. So I can decrease the exposure, uh, sort of like, a, like an ND filter. Uh, I can choose, well, increase the clarity, let's see the clarity, just to add more of a contrast on the sky, um, increase the saturation, maybe I can add a color to, a color cast to this, um, something like this, and well, increase the sharpness, everything that you have here, so uh, change the tint of the image, make it dark, make it colder or warmer, Let's click done and go to the split tone effect. So this is another effect that you can do, which is quite nice, but well, so for the highlights, we can give this uh, yellowish tone and then select shadows <clears throat> and give this other tone to the shadows and then play with the balance. But this is something I don't really like, uh, at least for this image. So I'll deactivate this. Uh, what I was talking about, the luminosity, uh, the luminance saturation here, uh, said you can you can do that from here. You can change the saturation of these colors independently. So I can increase the saturation. Well, we don't have any greens here, but uh, for example, the aqua, which is this blues, and the the blues, I can make them more saturated or desaturate them. So it's really cool and it's easy. The luminance, what you do here is make them darker or brighter. So, for for example, the oranges, I can make them darker or make them brighter. Um, we don't have any greens, but we do have some aqua tones and some blues. And, well, uh, let me show the before and after really quick. So, we can edit it a bit, the image. Uh, you can also add vignetting here. Um, the noise reduction here works pretty well, so uh, you can reduce the noise furthermore here if you want to um, and still preserve details. Um, on the effect, you can add uh, post-crop vignetting, so if you want to add vignetting like this, uh, change the midpoint, 
that's too much vignetting but i don't like it for this photo i like how it looks so far so this is the end result that i would uh keep um i like how this looks right now as it is so, so let's see if i can find the other image and show you the before and after uh library um let's well actually let's go to the finder and show you both images so this is the photo that you would get with your camera and this is the hdr okay so uh, quite a big difference uh this is why i like hdr photos now you can make crazy hdr effects but i don't like those i like to stick as natural as i as possible and even this is a bit too saturated but still a great uh, a great image so uh, that's all for now. I hope you liked this HDR tutorial. I'll make more um, and I'll go out and take more photos and I hope you will like them. As I said, uh, you have the raw files on my website and until next time, I'm Andre from PSD Box. Thanks for watching and see you next time.